The Court of Appeal has declared the Police Act 2020 unconstitutional and void. The Police Act, which was enacted in September this year, affects the constitutional mandate of the Police Service Commission. The Appeal Court ruled that the provisions of the Act was in conflict with paragraph 30, part 1 of the third schedule of the 1999 Constitution, which empowers the Commission to appoint persons into offices in the Nigerian Police except the Office of the Inspector General of Police. The judgment also nullified the recruitment of 10,000 constables carried out by the police authorities last year. The IG, Mohamed Adamu, has appealed the ruling which nullified the earlier order of the Federal High Court, Abuja. To discuss more on this development, we're joined via Zoom by lawyer Kunle Adegoke. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you. Good morning. The act was just passed in September, and now we have an appeals court ruling. Please take us through the real issues uh, here, because the back and forth between the commission and the IG has gone on for quite a bit. Yes, thank you very much. The issue basically is with respect to who has the power to recruit officers into the Nigeria police. And uh, there are two bodies here uh, concerned. While the MPF is saying that it has the power to recruit directly without involving the Nigerian uh, Police Service Commission, the Police Service Commission is equally maintaining that it is its constitutional responsibility to recruit officers, including cadet officers, who are just joining the uh, police. And when it comes to the constitutional issue of who has the power to appoint officers into the police, the, the, there is a dispute which must be resolved one way or the other. The only holder of government that has the power to resolve this issue is the court. And that is why there was a resort to the court. Unfortunately, the Federal High Court, I, fortunately or unfortunately, the Federal High Court came with its own interpretation of the relevant provisions of the law vis-a-vis -vis the Constitution and came to the conclusion that the case brought by the Police Service Commission was incompetent and nullified the, 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 the case. There was an appeal to the Court of Appeal, and the appeal was just recently decided uh, in, in a judgment led by Justice Olabi Sige. The Court of Appeal came to the conclusion that while interpreting the provisions of the new Police Act, there must be a resource, there must be a deep consideration to what exactly is the position of the Constitution, which is the origin of all laws in Nigeria. And looking at the Constitution, the relevant part to look at is the paragraph 30 of the part one of the third schedule of the constitution, which stipulates the mandates of the police service commission. And there are basically two items here. The mandate of the police service commission are to recruit, to appoint officers into the force and to implement discipline, promotion of officers. Now, when we look at these two elements, the language of the Constitution that the Police Service Commission has the power to appoint officers into the force, how is it to be interpreted? Is it limited to a caliber of officers? This is what the Court of Appeal came to interpret. All right. Um, since the Act has been uh, declared null and void, do you expect that it will be amended? Well, it is not the entire act that uh, was declared null and void. It is specific provision which uh, empowered the uh, police, Nigerian police force to recruit officers without resort to the constitution. Now, this particular provision requires an amendment. And the implication is that the authorities will need to refer the act back to the National Assembly for it to expunge this offending provision and amend it accordingly in line with the constitution. Insofar as that amendment has not been done, in fact, the implication is that that provision of the, of the act cannot be followed, cannot be implemented by anybody. Nobody can rely on it because the resort will always be to the judgment of the Court of Appeal vis-a-vis -vis the provision of the Constitution that empowers the Police Service Commission to make necessary recruitment into the force. All right, let's look at the nullification before we come to look at the constitutional mandate of the Police Service Commission, which is already highlighted by the ruling itself. Um, 10,000 constable earlier recruited, 
that recruitment has been nullified by the court. You referred to it earlier when you said that the enlistment would remain contrary to the Constitution and uh, therefore cannot hold. Where does that leave us? What happens to these 10,000 people that have already been recruited? Well, whatever uh, is done contrary to the Constitution is a nullity because uh, the, what we say in, in law is the fons et origo, that is the origin that of, the, of all laws that gives validity to all other laws is the Constitution. If an act is done, if any law is passed which is contrary to the Constitution, it will be a nullity to the extent of its inconsistency with the Constitution. Now, with the appointment having been nullified, the implication is that there will be a new recruitment that will not prevent such officers who were wrongly, illegally recruited from equally applying. There may be a consideration, there may be a priority to be given to such officers, depending on administrative procedure that the Police Service Commission might want to adopt in order to uh, give a lot of uh, reference to public policy. But as at now, the appointment, the recruitment is a nullity and cannot stand in law. Such officers have no jobs as at, as at this moment. Uh, just for the purpose of clarification, could you just explain to Ross again some of the core mandate of the Police Service Commission? Yes, basically have two fundamental mandates. And that is one, to recruit officers into the police, excluding the office of the Inspector General of Police, and also to maintain discipline and promotion of officers. These are the two, it's just a two-legged uh, uh, mandate given to the uh, commission. All right. Um, I, I want to go, you know, in a different direction. We um, uh, are used to, of course, having issues of throwing away the baby and the bath water. Um, do we also have those fears with this case? Are there certain parts of this act that will improve on policing in Nigeria and, of course, will improve on our criminal justice system in general um, that must, of course, be kept if we're going to be looking for an amendment to the Act. Um, and, of course, does this nullification also affect some of those things coming into play? Because I, I read through it, and there are a couple of things that I, I have seen that you know, pretty, are pretty important that I feel that we must, of course, implement in the, in the long run. So do, does yes. this seem like throwing away the baby and the bath, bath water in any way? No, uh, no, it is not exactly like that. The entire Act is not nullified. In fact, I can say that 98, if not 99 percent of the act is still valid, is still intact, is still enforceable. In, in actual fact, the only act that empowers the police in Nigeria to do, to carry out its mandate today is the new police act. It has repealed the old police act, which has been, which was in existence for probably about 80 or more years. It has, it has repealed that particular act. Now, this new police act is the one that regulates the activities of the police, that empowers the police, that you know, uh, provides it with the legal authority, aside from the Constitution, to do and regulate its procedure, the, implementing, the, the procedure for implementing and carrying out its duties under the law. And if you look at this new act, it has brought in a lot of you know, uh, improvements in how policing is supposed to be done. It has, uh, it has given a lot of recognition to procedure for enforcement of fundamental rights, how uh, a, a police officer is supposed to take statements, how a police officer is supposed to effect an arrest, how a police officer is supposed to give recognition to the right of, an, of a suspect. And, you know, it, it, has, it has a lot in it that would you know, uh, promote the campaign that has been embarked upon with respect to reforms of the police. What I think may be left out in it on how to ensure that the rights of the police officers themselves are adequately protected with respect to their remuneration, with respect to welfare, with respect to better training and what have you. And when you look at the act, I believe that it has made a lot of uh, improvements on how policing should be, should be done. And the decision of the Court of Appeal has not thrown away all this. It retains all that. The only aspect fundamentally that it has nullified is with respect to the recruitment of officers and the, uh, with the mandate 
you know, purportedly exercised by the Nigeria police uh, force in recruiting such uh, officers. It didn't nullify the entire act because it's not the entire act that is offensive. The courts of law in Nigeria have done this before. We call it the blue pencil rule, where there are provisions in an act that are inconsistent with the constitution. The court will pick its blue pencil and run a line across such provisions alone. And it is these provisions with respect to the mandate to recruit that have actually been nullified and not the entire act. So we can say that 98 or if not 99 percent of the act is still valid. But the area of controversy, the area of dispute with respect to uh, the power to recruit officers is what has been decided on and nullified accordingly with respect to the provision of the, of the act. Okay, the, the uh, PSC uh, has um, um, issued a statement, uh, aside from notifying us of the ruling, they are saying that they are going to come up shortly uh, with modalities for recruitment um, into the police force and, of course, the academy. Um, there are those who say this is not the end, that they shouldn't be hasty. Do you expect to see this matter get into the Supreme Court? Yes, definitely it will get to the Supreme Court. The other party, that is the office of the IGP, who is not uh, satisfied with the decision of the Court of Appeal, has the right, has the power to go on appeal to the Supreme Court. And in going on appeal to the Supreme Court, the relevant appeals must be filed within the relevant uh, provisions of the, of the law so that it comes quickly before the Supreme Court to, to be decided. The, if it goes up to the Supreme Court, Yes, it enriches the, uh, the jurisprudence of Nigeria. It shows up because the Supreme Court is the final court. And whatever is said by the Supreme Court will put a final rest to this issue. So the, there is nothing preventing the victorious party from embarking on the process of wanting to implement the law according to what the Court of Appeal has said is the right position of the law. However, the Office of the IG to appealing the judgment has the right to bring an application for stay of execution of the decision of the Court of Appeal. And it will be granted by the Supreme Court if it is found to be meritorious. So if there is an order staying the execution of the decision of the Court of Appeal, then the status quo will remain as it is now. The officers recruited will still remain in the police. They will still be given the rights, I mean, that they are entitled to because the Supreme Court probably would have said stay the execution of the decision of the Court of Appeal. But if it is not stayed, the implication is that the decision of the Court of Appeal must be carried out before the, court, the Supreme Court comes up with its own final determination of the issue. All right, Mr. Adegoke, okay. I, I want to um, also you know, mention something here, and I feel it's maybe one of the reasons why we are currently across the country seeing uh, protests. Um, a lot of people would say that we don't suffer from a lack of um, acts and laws. But implementation is, you know, maybe our biggest challenge as a country. Um, the new act, of course, makes mention of, uh, you know, arresting or banning arresting someone in, in, in place of a suspect. And, of course, also uh, reading a suspect their rights before they are arrested and some of all those things. Um, wh why do you feel or why do you think we still have a problem with implementation of the new act? Um, because even when it is, you know, put into law, we still don't see these things being put in, into practice. Yes, that is very fundamental. You agree with me that we need a lot of reorientation in the Nigerian police uh, force. The reason for this is that majority of the officers, I, I doubt if many of them are well trained enough to even know the relevant provisions of the law that they are supposed to implement. What exactly is the right guaranteed to an accused person uh, while uh, to, to a suspect before he becomes an accused and after he has even become an accused? Now, all this, there must be proper training for the police. There must be a new orientation. A police officer that sees himself as, as a god turn the Quran or the Bible into an act. He will still not obey. He will still not observe the provisions. At least majority of them went to the Nigerian uh, the, the police uh, college, they were uh, purportedly trained there. They have superior officers who are graduates that you expect them to 
uh, you know, observe the provisions of the law. Unfortunately, majority of these officers are the abusers of the law. There is a recent allegation against one Mr. Egeyemi, who is said to be the legal uh, task force officer. I believe that this is a superior police officer who had all the relevant trainings, but who has refused to observe the provisions of the law. If the lower cadres of the police officers are not observing the law, one will observe the senior officers to be the ones to, you know, ensure that the provisions of the law are carried out. However, aside from the issue of training and retraining, which must be constant, in fact, judges are trained and retrained. And that is why on so many occasions, judges will tell us that I have a training to do in Abuja, I won't be able to sit today. I have a training next week, I won't be able to sit next week. They are being trained and retrained. And the same thing should apply to the Nigerian police if we really want to ensure that there is security, there is a, 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 you know, good protection for fundamental rights of the citizens and that there is peace in Nigeria. There must be proper training for the officers. Aside from this, there must be a good guarantee of adequate welfare for the officers. I have been to the police college. I've been to the, the to their to their dormitories. I've, I've seen their the barracks where even the uh, qualified officers are living. This, it is a nice saw. You agree with me that there is nobody that will be trained in such an environment that will recognize that there is anything called a, a law in the place where he was trained, in the place where he is living, where he is carrying out his, his duties. It's a place. It's, it's a jungle. It is a place less than civilization. That online. How do you expect such an officer to now recognize the law, recognize the constitution, and recognize the fundamental right of an average citizen? It is not possible. Uh, all right, there Mr. Adeg, okay. Not only a retraining, a new orientation, there must be guaranteed provision of adequate welfare for the officers. All right, Mr. Adeg, okay. Uh, we'll have to leave it there for now. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast and for sharing uh, your thoughts on the matter. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure. You know, uh, some would say uh, the police is in the eye of the storm in, in this um, era of pandemic. Uh, is this a pandemic of revolution? <laughs> some would say like a whole lot is going on. But it's, a, it's, um, it's, in this it's, it's very interesting conversations because um, and these are conversations that need to be had. Um, one thing that I, I, you know, and I said this to you earlier, um, I personally don't think that we have a shortage of laws. Um, when people might be excited about the new police act, um, for me, I'm not really excited because I know that the problem that we have is implementation. And something I always wonder is, what exactly is in the training manual for the Nigerian police force? At what point do they you know, disregard everything that they learned while you know, going well, on, through- On the contrary, you know, I, I watched- um, um, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, um, Falano, uh, last night, and uh, he was talking about the kind of training that these officers get, and he said maybe that screws with their minds before they come out, and they take that, that it's, some of it is inhuman, some of the ways that they are trained. They're in enclosed spaces, they put tear gas, according to him, and then when these people come out to the society, you don't expect to see anything different because their psyche has been, you know, severely um, affected with uh, all the things that they had to go Absolutely. through. Uh, then again, one looks at the you know, the ongoing protests and the continuing uh, disagreement between the Inspector General of Police and the Police Service Commission. Yes. I think these are things that can be handled. And um, I, I, I'm, let me disagree a little with you on the Police Service Act. I believe that because we are not taking it further doesn't mean that we shouldn't get the right laws in place. Because when we need it, it will be available for yeah, us to use. Great. Um, and I, I don't, I, my statements don't mean that the police service act should be thrown away. I'm saying I like feel our challenge is implementation. Because I, I don't, a lot of exactly. times you ask, you tell a police officer, you know, I know my rights, and they tell you they don't care. Yes. You know, so it's not, it's really about implementation. You know, how do they arrest people? I don't know of any other country where someone is, a, a woman is arrested in place of her son. You know, they come it, searching it, for a suspect. He's not at home. They take the mother. 
it's, it's imperative that the entire training set up the, you know, the psychology of being in the police. Because I, I remember when I was quite young and I, I kind of mentioned to my father, I think I was still very, I would like to be a police officer. My father, first of all, looked me up and down, <laughs> not in my house. <laughs> Imagine I was still like uh, 10, 15 at the time, yes. you know, so it's, the image hasn't changed. We work on the image of the police force. We retrain them, and not only retrain them, retrain them in a way that has a human face. Because if I'm to go by what I've heard about how they are trained, then there are lots of issues we've not even begun uh, to scratch the and surface. I hope they and they also want to be trained. Sorry? I hope they, the police officers themselves, want oh, to be trained. Oh, they will bend if we have the right better. rules in place. That's what I think. And I'm hoping that uh, these protests uh, will help you know, shift our leaders in the right direction. Absolutely. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.